Okay, folks. Um, sorry, I didn't get to everything in class today. Now, I will say that I got further in the one o'clock section. So some of this I'll be saying here at the beginning will be more directly applicable for my 1115 students, but in neither class did I get to the Neolithic art. So uh, there's, there's gonna be something here for everybody. So uh, cave painting started to talk about that in 1115 and we, we got, you know, made, made some significant progress in the one o'clock. Um, what is really essential here? Well, I think one is to note that in so much of this cave art, and I'll just give you kind of a, a little sampling here. Um, in so much of this, uh, the, the, the primary figures are animals rather than human beings. And what we want to make of that, well, there, there are multiple different hypotheses that are possible. Um, you know, it, it could simply be art for art's own sake, that Paleolithic people enjoyed painting the animals they saw. I think that certainly could be part of it. I doubt that's the whole story. I think that there's a decent chance that there was some kind of religious element going on here, perhaps a storytelling element. And who knows, maybe different animals represented different tribes. So there's, there's lots of possibilities here. In terms of the art itself, what really stands out is that the art has a kind of representational element. And that can be quite sophisticated, as we see here in the lion panel of Chauvet. You see, you know, multiple strategies by which the artist has tried to create a three-dimensional illusion, the illusion of depth. So you have overlapping forms, you have shading, particularly on the heads of some of those lions to give a sense of, of three dimensions. So really quite impressive. I mean, given that this is the first uh, painting, the, or the oldest painting that we've discovered, from Western history, this is pretty advanced stuff. Uh, but on the other hand, there are elements, as we can see here in the so-called Chinese horse, that are rather abstract. Look at those symbols um, above the horse, below. Um, it's not entirely clear what those are supposed to be. Uh, is that some kind of uh, very primitive symbolic form of, uh, of language. It's, it's really hard to say for sure. Um, but again, you look at the image and you can tell you were looking at a horse or um, a donkey or something like that. Um, so it, it is accurate to describe this art as naturalistic, but, but only to a certain point. Um, all right, well, that takes us on to Neolithic. And um, I don't need to talk a whole lot about what makes Neolithic culture distinct because you've got a good explanation of that in your textbook in West in the World. I already mentioned in class today, the big breakthrough that makes Neolithic culture possible is of course, agriculture and that makes settled communities possible. Not big cities, we're not there yet, but permanent settlements of a few hundred, perhaps even in some cases, a few thousand people. Now, if we associate sort of fertility figures and cave painting with Paleolithic art, um, What's most characteristic of Neolithic art are megaliths, okay? And um, Stonehenge would be the most famous one of them all. A megalith is, is simply a large structure, uh, a large stone structure that is put together without the use of mortar, okay? And in the case of Stonehenge, we see a... Uh, post and lintel type construction. So I've got a little diagram here. The post are the uprights, 
the lintel is the horizontal slab. And uh, you can see how there's often a little indentation in the lintel and a kind of projection or knob on the post that allow the lintel to kind of fit into place. And um, I, I'm actually, I'm not gonna say much more about Stonehenge because I've prepared a handout on Neolithic art. It's already there in Canvas. If you go to unit one, the unit one module, when you go down to handouts, you'll find it there. And it basically breaks down what you need to know about Stonehenge and what you need to know about our other Neolithic work of art, which is um, uh, the remains at least of a mother goddess statue from Malta. Malta is the small island that's just south of Sicily in the Mediterranean Sea. And I wanted to show you this image. You can see um, these are some of the oldest temples in the world that have been excavated. And you can see uh, that they're sort of womb shaped. And that mother goddess statue was discovered in one of these temples. So clearly the Paleolithic preoccupation with fertility has not gone away in the Neolithic era. So even though art is changing and adapting, um, some of the same obsessions uh, remain very much in place. But again, on that Neolithic art handout, you'll find some more information about that. So that's all I'm gonna say. I wanted to keep this really brief. So once you've watched this video and you've looked over the Neolithic art handout, go back to your study guide, but go back to the section on prehistoric art and make sure you feel like I've answered all your questions. And if I haven't, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions you have about either this or anything else. You know, as you prepare for your first online quiz, I wanna make sure you feel very confident. So just let me know if uh, there, are any, there are anything that you feel unconfident about. Okay, have a great weekend. Good luck on your quiz. I'll probably still send out a reminder to you via email about it, but, um, but I hope you all do very well and have a great weekend. Thanks.